Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to your special Inner Circle session. I did promise to do this. And it's a session that I'd done probably about 18 months ago when copper was first starting to raise its beautifully copper-covered head. And since then, it's been on a bit of a wild ride. So we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about why copper could be a good place to be in 2023 and your options for trading it. Give you a little bit of a deeper dive into what's happening in the world of copper and also possibly some of the headwinds associated with the current state of play on the planet. So uh, remember, it's your webinar, of course. Uh, make sure that you ask questions along the way. Uh, I'm here to help you along in your trading journey. And remember, of course, this is for educational purposes only. If you don't do diligence on anything that you see or hear, remember to follow trading plans and risk management is critical on entry and exit. Right, okay, so let's have a, this deeper dive into copper. So. What we're going to look at today is, is how copper's price influences on sentiment, key factors in movement, and the short and medium term outlook for copper, and of course, how to trade it. Everybody who's here will get a link to uh, the recording, uh, but feel free to ping me an email and, uh, and I'll answer any questions you've got. If you're not a gold client, why not open a secondary account so you can trade some things like copper and wheat and things like that? Then again, ping me a line and, and I'll let you know how to go about doing that. Right, okay, there are two spot prices uh, you may see quoted for copper, both are expressed in USD. Uh, the, there's a price per pound uh, currently trading at approximately 4.38, and that should have been 4.28, apologies, uh, and a price per tonne. So if you see, generally speaking, the one that's traded is the price per pound, but you may see that price per tonne quoted as well. So if we look at context of this, I put a long term chart on just so you can see what's happened. And generally speaking, 2011 was seen to be a peak at around about 459. Uh, we got a obviously a major drop off going on right through to 2019. And then we had the pick up again. Uh, and so in 2020, we peaked at uh, 2022, we peaked at 502. Little pullback, have another test of that double top. Boom, we're down 35%. And we'll go into the reasons for that. Also of interest are the LME and, and NYMEX stock levels, to a lesser degree, the Shanghai index that has. Uh, and then most futures are most commonly traded on the COMEX and the LME. Uh, and government also stockpile most commodities in China are, are, are particularly good at that. And all of these things have implications, which we'll talk about along the way. If we look at the CFD contract, it is obviously traded at that 430 level rather than the 2000 and whatever it is level. If you've got a demo account, trade on the demo account first because you need to get used to the pricing. So just go into specs and you can see there, the leverage is at 5%. Depends on the sort of account you've got as to what the leverage is you can get. And you can see their minimum volume on this is 0 0.01. But interestingly, Rod's point out, oh, it's 0 0.1 on MT4. Okay, so the contract size is 25,000 per contract. Okay, but you can, as I said, you can enter, go in here, you can enter point if you have 0 0.01. There we go. If we look at the influences on copper, first thing to say is of all of the metals, it's one of the most, uh, certainly the, the non-precious metals, it's very attractive to traders. It's got high volatility, it's got high liquidity. The high volatility creates the opportunity, but it is attractive to traders. So it, it is traded really quite vigorously on the COMEX. And generally it's sort of the king of base metals. It's it's got it's in high demand for residential, commercial, and industrial applications. It has limited availability and is easy to recycle. So the the reality is with copper is that it, it doesn't corrode like other uh, other metals to the same degree. And it's one of the reasons why one of the picks I've got is 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 in that space. Historically, it's generally looked at as a generally good barometer of economic health, as as change in copper price can suggest either a recession is coming and therefore demand for copper will drop theoretically uh, or and vice versa of course and there's various influencing factors on that which we're going to talk a little bit more about in terms of where we are right now so some would suggest it's a leading indicator if you've got a disparity between copper price and an index the index for example perhaps there's time you had a look at it it may be one of those things which which suggests a change is going. Now, let's just have a quick look at that. Let's just stick on a daily chart of the uh, of copper price. Uh, and then let's just compare that with a daily chart on the US uh, on the US 500. We actually saw the peak in November 
November, December 2021. Um, in terms of what copper, where, where copper was at that stage, you can see it, it was it was starting to lose a bit of momentum. It actually peaked in February 2022. Uh, then we got this this major drop off of about 35% from essentially June, beginning of June uh, last year. What happened in the S&P 500? Uh, if we look at June last year, then you can see there we had our last little run up before we had the move down. So copper was already moving down, even though this was still going up. Uh, likewise, we saw copper move up from really, we can go back to the beginning of December. Okay, it's been it paused a little bit and then it had another little run up. So we can just look at the S&P 500. And November, December, we did nothing. We actually had this pullback, but copper was still going up. So again, copper has been leading in this. Uh, so that's why some people would say, hey, look, it's not a bad thing in terms of being a predictor. The two factors in pricing are the cost of extraction and distribution uh, and obviously supply demand. At this stage, uh, obviously, one of the issues was cost of extraction increased because of fuel costs. So it made copper less profitable, uh, which which hit copper miners quite significantly. But the other thing is that we've seen a, a major demand drop. We had a major demand drop due to what happened in China, uh, the lockdowns, and the perceived impact of a recession. Uh, it's priced in USD, so there's some inverse correlation with the greenback. And if you just want to stick to your FX and not look at this, generally speaking, the Aussie and the Canada are the most heavily correlated to this. If we look at the USD correlation, now, historically, it, it, it's relatively well correlated up until, interestingly, 2019. So you can see it's moving in the same direction. There's obviously slight blips, but generally speaking, down, down, uh, up, up, down, down. And then when, and then come 2000, it started to get a little wibbly wobbly, uh, being the technical term, sort of around about beginning of 2019. And then we saw this massive disparity once 2020 hit. And, and since then, we've been in this negative correlation. We see copper's doing versus what the USD is doing. So at this stage, there's a negative correlation between copper and the USD, but that ties in a lot with where the USD is. If we see risk on, we see the US dollar drop. And certainly since, if I mean, again, if we look at what's happened since the beginning of December to US dollar, there it is. Uh, so meanwhile, uh, that's the beginning of December when copper started to go up uh, and you can see that downwards move in USD. So so really highly correlated at the moment. If we first of all look at demand, and this is one of the reasons why copper dropped off. I think this is 2021, but you can see how much China is reliant on copper. Then the UK and, and the Eurozone, Japan, India, then South Korea in that order. The US are actually pretty low on this, but I think that will change. I think we'll see the US start to uh, pick up just simply in terms of uh, a policy. So if you get China, locking down, then it's not surprising that demand starts to diminish. However, interestingly, what kept copper at a reasonable place was supply. Now, just to, just to let you know, China only produces around 8% of the world's copper and uses around about 54%. Australia pretty low on the, on the production front, but this is production by country. And remember, countries don't necessarily own copper mines. If we look at a lot of Australian companies who have global uh, exposure, then we've got a lot of Australians earning, owning mines in Chile, in Canada, uh, in Mexico. So we've got, in terms of ownership of copper companies, uh, then we've got uh, we've got quite a, uh, a difference in terms of maybe I should have found trying to find a slide that suggested that. Let me just see if I can produce this very quickly. Produce this handout. There we go. Let's see if it's loading. There you go. Because I'm such a nice man. There you go. In handouts now, you'll see a handout with copper with all of this information. That's who produces it versus demand. Now, this is the um, this is one of the reasons why copper has managed to, despite China being in lockdown uh, and dis despite the markets continuing to go down, we had our 35 percent drop in copper price and then we had a little recovery. And this is one of the reasons why, if we look at the LME stock levels, you can see these have dropped uh, and we're currently at five year lows. Uh, so what we've got is a situation where although demand has been reduced because of China's lockdown, we saw that impact on copper prices very short term. 
So we saw this this sort of pullback in November uh, and a reluctance, despite that supply, uh, to to move up. Uh, this so despite all that, copper has held its price pretty well since the beginning of November, with a slight blip, and really since then has has, has shot up. So it's actually in a technical bull market. It's over twenty two percent from its lows in in November. If you take it, its lows. It's from July last year. It's actually up 36%. So very much in a bull market for copper. Uh, and there's no reason why that shouldn't continue. I don't have a slide by company, but I might even have a look around those. And, and those of you who are regular, um, because I, again, because I'm such a, 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 a grand fella, uh, I might even uh, have a look and see if I do find something, I'll ping the link out on one of the daily updates and stuff. Right, okay, so let's get back to, uh, so inventory is low. Uh, demand is now increasing, obviously, because ch China is reopening. Now, uh, so this came from S&P Global. We had a 6% drop in, in production from Chile. That impacted supplies. We've seen that already. Major push into decarbonization um, in renewable, into renewable energy suggested um, that uh, as I said before, the recyclability of copper makes it copper attractive, both in terms of using it for um, for uh, as an electrical conduit, but also its efficiency. China opening, uh, reopening is going to increase demand again, and Biden policies, even in its inflation policies, renewable energy was part of, part of that big story. EV vehicles use copper in extensively. And now this is where we're at so i'll explain this the rocky road is if we continue on current policy okay so that's that darker brownie blah, horrible colors if we look at the high ambition this is where we'd like to be if we adhere to all the policy uh the policy sort of um policy sort of statements and stuff that, that have been sort of released by governments across the world and this blue line is demand OK, and what we've got is we've got a real shortage. Uh, so this is the supply we're going to need. This is the demand we're going to need. So we've got a real shortage of supply. Whichever way you slice it, it's a shortage, 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 shortage. Um, and so what this means is that whichever way you slice it, um, the expectation is well, we're not really interested in 2015, 2035. Uh, but we are interested in 2020 to 2025, and the, the, the undoubted scenario is, or seems to have changed uh, over the last 12 months, to suggest a continued, a continued issue with supply versus demand. Uh, and right now we're eight, on, eight month highs. We moved to uh, Douglas uh, low copper inventory levels. There is a lot of copper followers on Twitter. Uh, suggesting we'll see a real supply squeeze in the near term. I think there is a, there's been a, um, it depends what they mean by a supply squeeze. Um, oh, you're so good. Uh, thanks, Wayne. I'll have a look at that in a second. I, I, I think there will be an absence uh, or, or, or a problem with supply. Uh, we've already, I've already referenced the, uh, the issue in as the world's biggest. Uh, developer or, or sorry the world's biggest producer of copper um, I think the demand is is going up exponentially in the short term um, so I do think uh, I do think that's the case now it, I, I'm not sure whether there'll be a um, I'm not sure there'll be a lessening of people digging it out the ground it, 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 uh, now all prices are down. Obviously, the prices of of of, uh, of extraction and distribution are far far better than they were, let's say, six months ago. So uh, I do think this. I do think it, it's that it's that inability to increase supply versus an increase in demand. So I'm not sure. I think the supply squeezes. I'm not sure where where that would come from. I think it's the combination of of an inability to increase supply versus um, lack of stockpiles, 
to rely on. Often what happens is when when China see the price of, of, of any commodity going up, they've already stockpiled a, a chunk when it was cheap. And so they rely on uh, they rely on um, on the stockpiles to stop having to buy it at an expensive price. And that that does impact on on copper price. My understanding is at the moment is that Chinese stockpiles are, are not particularly great. Again, I, I, I don't see any any reason why people wouldn't keep buying copper. Did I check copper chart? No, I, well, I can check copper chart. So are we breaching that key level? Yes, we are breaching that key level. Obviously, there's uh, some investors uh, listening, to this <laughs> listening to this presentation. Uh, so yes, just watch this. There's, uh, there's increased volume on this. Uh, this is um, an average volume indicator, turns green if it's above average volume. You can see there, the last 30 minute bar, we've, we've poked our head above on, on good volume. Uh, this bar, obviously, we're only halfway through. We will look at the 15 minute and that's on high volume uh, with the, the candle that's just finishing. Only just though, only just. I'd, I'd like a little bit of a, a, a look at the five minute chart. It's, mm, so. I'd like maybe, um, yeah, I, I like that, but that candle isn't massively compelling. You can see it's given up quite a lot. Is that in, still in the top third? Yeah, perhaps. So, uh, yeah, look, thanks for, um, we'll come back and check on that, but that's good, Sonia. It's it's there or thereabouts as it's, it's to where you'd re-enter. We had a little pause here. We'll look at the 15-minute chart. We had a little retracement, and then we're away again. Uh, so, yeah, looking great. Overbought, possibly. Let's look at the RSI on the hourly chart. Wouldn't surprise me if it's pushing into that territory because it has had a hell of a run up. Uh, yeah, it's moved into overbought on that and on the four hourly uh, and on the daily. So it's overbought on every time frame. Now, what I would suggest is, is that if you are ever entering anything on an overbought situation, which is in, in, in itself questionable. But, but look, I mean, it was overbought here and we had that pullback that just get, let it have a breath and then away it went again. We had this pullback uh, and then it's away again. So just watch if you are entering the, anything that's, that's close to 70 or actually above this 70, as soon as it starts to drop, uh, then you're... Um, uh, then you could uh, you could be uh, could be time to exit. So just watch this, uh, watch that. It's a great point, uh, Robin. Thank you for um, thank you for raising it. Uh, what overbought means, and, and just to put this into context, that there's two um, generally speaking, there's two indicators. Just a little side issue that, that look at this overbought oversold thing, uh, and they're calculated quite differently. So with the RSI, it's acceleration of a move higher. Um, creates in simple terms creates this with a stochastic it's the movement away from trend i think uh is the determining factor remember we have a session on that at some stage right okay so um right now eight month highs um relaxation channel lockdown us weakness low inventory usd weakness and low inventory has seen eight month highs it moved from seven month highs to eight month highs today We've got 15% rise since mid-December. That's accelerated over the last two weeks. Uh, and as I said, stockpiles not um, too big uh, in terms of reporting from China. And technically, 435 looks important. Then 460 is the next very established level of interest for those of you who like it uh, a little longer term and, and relax it uh, slightly less or slightly more relaxed. So one of the decisions you've got to make really is: is am I going to trade the short term? Am I going to trade this long term? And, and what assets am I going to use to trade this copper idea if you like it? So let's briefly talk about copper futures CFD. This is the pricing based on the on a three month futures contract. It's rolled over an expiry, can be traded long or short. Obviously, that's one of the advantages of CFDs over, say, stocks. Uh, in in that, um, in that you, it's easier to trade short. A minimum contract of 0.1 on MT4. USD is a trade currency, obviously on MT5, now 0.01. It trades 23 hours a day. Major moves tend to be on European open, or on the open of the major indices. So or, or open on Asia, open, open on Europe and open on US. It's interesting, uh, and this is very anecdotal, it, it seems to outperform in the European session and then give a, a lot away in the, in the US session. 
Maybe they're a little more brutal in, her, in, 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 in how they trade it. So if we trade point 0.1, okay, uh, and we get a one cent move and copper, it's approximately $32 move in the profit loss. So if, if you trade it, it, yeah, a point 0.1 volume, and when we traded, what did we do? We did this trade here, and that's looking good. That's looking very good. And now it's got my, um, if, if I wasn't on this, I'd be entering that in the portfolio, okay? If we look at this move here, so it was 87 profit, uh, and essentially it was a move from 425 to 429, and that was 0 0.8, 0 0.08 of a contract. So it's only a really small position, um, but that gives you an indication in terms of price. Uh, the best way to do this is to actually trade at minimum volume, or, or even better if you've got a demo account. You'll see the spread here is a, is always around about 0.4 of a cent. Okay, so these are that's four dollars thirty one cents, and then uh, so if we look at this third decimal point, there's usually 0.4 difference between here and here. So it's 0 .00, 0 0.004 difference. Obviously, it's not the only way to trade copper. We can trade. We've got really two good options, two pure options on the ASX 200. We've got Oz Minerals, and we've got Sunfire Resources. Oz Minerals has obviously been the recipient of some takeover interest. If we just look at the charts of those, and this is, we are actually in Sunfire. So here's Oz Minerals on a daily chart. So you can see it's sort of, I'm not sure, I wouldn't use Oz Minerals at this stage. I think it's just uh, obliterated in terms of its uh, in terms of its normal price movement. So Sunfire is uh, the best to do. Um, we had this move up to around about 650 and then this retracement over the last few days and then we had a good day at the office today moving back up towards that sort of, sort of 628 so over 628 is the trend continuation if we get that tomorrow which it looks as though we might um then in terms of where we could move to uh you might get a pause there around about two and a half percent but i think really we're looking at seven dollars on this, which is around about 12% in the medium term, if copper continues, it's move higher. If we look at the US, then purest copper play on there is probably Freeport McMoran Inc. There's Freeport doing very well. This was a chart of the day back here uh, when it was at $40. It's moved up 10% now and looks as though it's going to continue to move up. Uh, a happy joy joy um, move higher to the next resistance at 45.25 now there's the next move up around about six percent to 47.87 these are other ways of trading it of course now but the issue is you've got to do your own due diligence now, let's just check on earnings fcx usually comes quite early in the piece there we go january 25th is when it reports so that's a week away so if you are going to enter freeport you're in you're out you're shaking it all about and getting out before earnings be interesting to see what, how they come across, but or you could be, be poised for the post earnings uh, party. It's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of Freeport. Generally, they report very well because they have a tendency to to be quite conservative in their forward guidance. So generally, you can see here if we look back at their reporting over the last really since 2019, you can see they've only had one adverse or one miss in terms of expectations so if you like that as a concept of looking at looking at it then the the odds are probably stacked in freeport's favor particularly in light of the move in price so remember in october when they last reported they would say well look this is what we did last quarter this is what we expect going forward and that would be based on the price on october the 20th uh, and if we look at the price on October the 20th, oh, it's going, it's going, it's gone. Okay, if we look at the price on October the 20th, it was down here at 345 since then. Uh, copper prices moved up. We've got some others. Like we've got uh, Aries Resources. They're not, if we look at List Corp, it's just such a great site, this. Uh, we're really moving down the list in terms of market cap on this. So a lot of these hot chili peel, peel mining, uh, CYM, all that sort of stuff, uh, are really low cap. And why is that? It's because BHP and Rio have bought them all out. Uh, AIS aren't tradable on MT5, uh, I don't think. Uh, in fact, I know 
Um, so really you're restricted here to, to these major two, US copper stocks. Uh, obviously Freeport are gonna come big, but we've also got Southern Copper SCCR, check whether you can do that, uh, and but then BHP there. So that would be the other way, but obviously you're, you're diluting the impact of copper price by trading a BHP or a Rio. But obviously you can trade BHP on just about any, uh, any exchange on the planet. As I said, other diversified global, global miners, BHP probably have a greater copper influence than uh, or copper than Rio. Now, although it is diverse, although these are global diversified miners and copper occupies a far less component, actually what I'll do, sorry, Wayne, I, I forgot to do this. You put the work in and didn't share this. So that's really mean. So Wayne kindly went and found me the 15 top copper companies. So I'm just gonna put that in here. And I'm going to put it in chat. You're a good man. You guys are just fantastic to work with. I just have to say that. There we go. Annual copper demand increased by 53%. Uh, EV sales, I mentioned that um, 40%. That's why lithium is a good place to be too. There we go. And you cross mining, in, interestingly. So if you like the copper and gold story, and why wouldn't you? Obviously, new cross mining has somewhere to be. Let's just see. Anyway, have a look at those and then check your, your platform. Obviously, NCM benefiting from gold and copper. Historically, not a very good run company. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. CEO of U Newcrest. Um, if we look at this, then, yeah, we've got a nice level in the nice line in the sand, just over $23 we could be interested in. It's, oh, so I forgot Sims. How dare I? So Sims, uh, Waste Metal Management Company. Now, why I've included these is simply because if you start with the idea that copper is one of the most renewable base metals, uh, then why wouldn't SIMS do well out of copper pricing? Because even waste copper, if if copper copper goes up, then waste copper is going to go up as well in price. Uh, so we're looking at $15 on this. And, and if we do get a nice move uh, through this level of $15, which is now over its 200 MA, then we've probably got an 8% move up here. I wouldn't be shy entering that if it broke uh, if it broke 15. We've talked about Freeport, and then of course the Aussie and the Canadian dollar are most the, the mostly correlated FX pairs. So that's the ways you can trade it apart from the, the copper futures. The copper futures is probably the purest. If you're interested in copper play, that's probably the way to go. If you don't want to give yourself the opportunity to get access to that, then certainly Sunfire is a great play. Maybe Sims, SGM, and FCX. To any Freeport employees who have hooked into this webinar. Um, I've spelled your company's name wrong. All in all, what next for you need to make a choice? Uh, you can addition, you can add copper futures to your to your game, as well as the share CFDs by using MT5. You can't trade share CFDs on MT4. If you're going to stick with the FX, if you're going to stick with MT4, you're sort of restricted to the FX correlation uh, a little bit, which is well, not the best place to be possibly. If you have got an MT4 account, it's really easy to open an MT5 account. Just go into your go into your client portal and you'll see um, how to add an MT5 account to that. And then it's up to you whether you fund them or not. The, the advantage is you can uh, download a demo and as I said, test copper on that so you can see, get used to the pricing. For a longer term process, I'll show you a process in a moment. And obviously if you are using the share CFDs, look into when the earnings report, there's lots and lots of copper. Um, there's lots and lots of copper. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to give you this site. This is the best base metal site, uh, which is kickometals.com. This is all the base metal stuff going on. So you get spot prices. Um, you get the remember of spot, spot price will differ from. I'm going to put this into. Yeah, there you go. Kickometals.com. Also, um, I had a look at trading economics. Uh, this is just such a great site. I'm going to give you this link as well because a it's just such a great site but secondly it's just a, one of the best sites on the planet it's just sensational i put that into chat as well relating to uh, relating to the copper price here's the problem with trading the the fx so here's copper price versus AUD usd so there is some correlation there undoubtedly you can see the correlation but it's less pronounced um so this is a nymex futures copper price okay and this, this is the aussie usd so we do get a general movement in the same direction. 
and then there's downtrend there's an upwards trend on the copper price slow to react so it's not very well correlated but it's sort of in the right ball game and so what i'm going to do if you want to have a little deeper dive on that i'm going to give you that as well i thought that was interesting right there's the trading economics link sorry i forgot to press send on that and there's a copper price link versus aussie dollar now i haven't uh, had a deeper dive on this macro micro thing actually quite interested in this site i've not come across this before uh, so i'm going to have a little play with this i'm sure a couple of other of you uh, i'm always looking for great sites great resources and that this looks like a good one so it's got coal versus uh, if we, you want to look at coal versus aud um there we go that's what's rba rate, uh, rate, rate indicator there we go so current rate indicator is uh, 61 percent of what i think that's a rate rise so 61 percent expected that the next time the rba meet which is next month there'll be a uh, raise in rates don't overkill on on data find the one or two resources that really give you the information that you need i, I this is an exception normally i check out things in a little more detail um, but it looks as though you can tr you can look at any Oh, okay. Let's log in and sign up and all that sort of thing. But you should be able to get that that link that I sent you through. You should be able to get that fine. Just be aware of opinion articles. Everybody's got an opinion on everything, and quite often opinions are certainly on financial TV. Are there? They bring on two experts. One who says this. One who says one who says black. One who says white. And that's to make give it a little bit of entertainment in there as well. Um, Bloomberg is slightly less palatable than CNBC and Bloomberg, but it's probably, uh, it depends on what level you are. You know, I don't like Bloomberg. I think it's just too much, but there's some great information on that. Um, if I was to sit down and watch some financial TV, which is worth doing every now and then, because you get into what the market chatter is, then CNBC is probably more palatable. So, uh, but yes, always, always look for resources which are backed up by data backed up by meaningful data backed up by something that's solid uh right okay paul i'm an egg cap where can i try copper um open a secondary account with go markets and you can access copper and all of you uh, look your comments and questions uh, have been wonderful today thank you very much and, and keep an eye on the copper chart for me um quick one uh, this uh this is in i'm not going to go through this because we're we're, we're clocking up the clocking up the minutes but if you were looking at a long-term approach and i've talked about this before but this is a good example uh, of how you would go through it so i go through any um fundamental idea so you have the the idea that that copper is going to be uh, and the evidence is increased cost of mining decreased copper inventory us dollar is an issue china uh, there may be a pullback um this is outdated actually this is one i did a little while ago there may be a pullback due to recession but it gives you the idea uh, and of course, there's um, most of the increase in demand that we might see is not yet policy. So we've yet to see some of the infrastructure spending come to pass. We've got policy in place, but not the finance to back it up. But you get the idea. And there you go. If you want to, de to defuse the impact, just watch. If you've got copper and sunfire and then you're thinking of opening a BHP and copper starts to pull back, you're probably best, um, probably best taking a little bit of sunfire off if you think the story is good. Because you can diffuse the impact of anything with diversified miners of course anyway some things to think about there what's most important is you look at the sessions look at the session today what, ask yourself the question well how can i use this practically to help my trading uh, whatever form you, you're trading and uh, obviously if you're new to copper and you're trading the copper futures do your stuff in terms of getting used to the pricing all of that sort of stuff it's really important let's do a let's do a last little check of a couple of things we'll check on the uh copper price see what's happening with that um let's just check on the 30 minute chart and i see it pulled back pull back that might be that rsi pullback we're waiting for uh so on the hourly chart yeah you can just see that pullback now since we've the last 10 minutes we've just pulled back a little bit low volume on the last uh on the last uh hourly candle as well so i wouldn't be surprised to see that pause pull back so a little bit and then we're good to go again maybe one of the things that you can tell or one of the things you can use to tell whether something's a pullback or whether it's a reversal as well as being volume is you can look at what's happening to look at what's happening to the indices because the indices are risk on so we'll sort of move with copper we've already discovered that 
you can see the indices aren't dropping off. So this looks like a copper profit, a copper profit take on people who have been in since 423. And because it's at 430. So I hope that's useful. No swap on copper F, but rollover adjustment and end of contract. Uh, yes, there is a rollover adjustment. Is it controlled like all reduced mining within prices going? No, it's the, there's no um, there's no op, uh, copper related OPEC. So I referenced before that the, 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 there's some stockpiling goes on country on country, which allows them if copper price is getting too high, just to uh, just to sort of take the foot off the pedal in terms of how, many, how much they're buying. That's probably it for today. And so look, trade safe. I think maybe doing one of these a month, maybe where we have a deeper dive on something. But I want it to have some practical outcome. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves. It's uh, thank you very much for all your attention, all your participation. It's always great. Catch you later. Bye bye for now.